primary teaching. Brilliant. Right, so what's going to happen? I've got to obviously concentrate. I'll be trying to get you yeah. into conversation and stuff. But if I'm suddenly looking in your ear while you're talking, don't be put off. I mean, probably sometimes I'll be behind you like that. If my wife were here now, she'd be saying, don't look in his ears because um, growing, hair's growing out of him. <laughs> yeah, we all have that problem. <laughs> when you go for a haircut, so when nice. you get older, you go for a haircut. She does haircut. Spend less, less time on top of your head and the more time in your ears. I was like, is that what I've got to do? Left time there. <laughs> we'll start to give it a good polish key. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, so this, yeah, so it'll take shape as we go. Uh, it'll be two hours. Um, it goes quickly. He'll come mm. in and tell us he's now up. Mm, I'll either feel good about it and be relaxed and start talking to you and get up on this side. I'll go to sleep. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. You got enough work? Yes, thanks. Did you find that tea? No. Never even made it. What happened? I don't know what happened. Did they go and get Keith? Oh, must have got Keith. Must have got Keith. Right. I'll try again. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Right. To let you know when we're running. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, please. Strong as you can. No, no milk. No sugar. I mean, just a bit of milk. Yeah. Bit of milk. Strong as you can. Build this tea. Yes. Sugar. Okay. Stronger the better. Right. So we're up and running. We're live. Good. So what we're going to do is, I'll ask you your name, and then we'll basically start from your granddad or whatever, and we'll come to the present day. Then we'll mm -hmm. sort of pace it through, um, and follow your journey and your story, really. Mm -hmm. So, who are you, sir? I am Keith Marshall. Keith Marshall. And where are you from? Now I live at Mexborough. Mexborough? Mm. But I used to uh, live at Woodlands and I worked at Brosworth Pit there. Right. Mexborough, that's Ted Hughes country, isn't it? Isn't that yes. The poet? Yes. So how far is that away? That's what, that's Seven miles. Seven miles. Great. So you were at Brodsworth? Yes. And how long were you there for? From 1959-60 to 1990 when it closed. Jeez. Christ. So that's 30... 30 years. Wow. And did you come from a long line of mining people or are you well, a maverick? My granddad, he came from Ilkeston. And where's that? To the, it's Derbyshire. Okay. For the for the mining, and then had my dad. Of course, my dad was a butcher or a butcher's mate right. or assistant, and then he went in the army during the war. Came out, could, found out he couldn't manage on butcher's wages, so he finished up going down the mine. So the mine was well paid. Mm. Better paid than. Butchery. Anywhere else, yeah, really? butchery. Butchery, we've got plenty of meat, but no money. Yeah. <laughs> well fed. Mm. So how old were you? Did you, did you know him as a butcher? Uh, I was only a toddler. I can remember little things, you know, such as him making sausages and things like that, and, and going to the shop to him. But other than that, I was only a toddler. So he went down of the mine. Yes. And how long did his career last? Well, I'd be guessing here. I think it, I must have been about ten. I think. Right. When he went down the mine, and then he he, he made a vow to me. He says, D "You're not going down the mine." But for three months, I walked up and down the North Road from Woodlands to Doncaster trying to get an apprenticeship. Couldn't get one. In the end, went on my own and signed on at the pit without my dad knowing. He yeah. went crazy. But he Did says, you, you made your bed, now you're laying it. Really? And that's it. Did you have brothers and sisters? I had one sister. She didn't go down the pit. Or did no. she? So he was happier with her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was happy with me after that. Yeah. But uh, at that moment, he said, no, he wasn't. Yeah. And I worked my way up from 15. I signed on at 15, but you're not allowed down the pit till you're 16. Mm. So 
I did me, I worked on the pit top, loading materials and that, and then went to do me uh, training at Bentley Pit. All right. Where you're allowed to go down. Because, um, so you were 15, you weren't allowed to go down one pit, but you were allowed to go down Bentley. Only with some super right. supervising trainees. Trainers, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And then I came back to Brodsworth when I was just before 16. Went in, in miners, I mean, into the wages office for, as a boy like, T boy, amongst other things. And then when I was 16, went down, went on to the haulage, what they call the haulage, transporting coal and empties and forward, back and forwards. We did that for a couple of three years, and then eventually I went into into the uh, diesel garage down the mine because they had underground locomotives. Right. And I were maintaining them up until I was 21. And then at 21, I went diesel drive, diesel locomotive drive for about 12 years. Did you have to have a license for that? Uh, you, you got to pass a test. Yeah. Yeah. So you became a train driver? Yeah. But both coal and uh, passengers. You didn't use the same. Yes. So you used same the, diesel. It's the same truck, as it were. The same train. No, you, you had different uh, different wagons for uh, for for the pa we used to call them paddies. Yes. A passenger train. But Where does paddy come from? I don't know. No idea. And were the, they? So the first ones, I've just had a funny enough, I've just had a chap from Bentley, he was talking about, he found at tea breaks, he used to go off and find corners of the mine that were unoccupied, and he found in there one of the old transporters where you were back to back, and you looked, as you drove down, you looked at the walls as you were back to back on your guys. Did you start off on those ones? No, what we started off on, let me explain, is the, the same kind of things what, uh, uh, transported the coal, we used to get empties, put chains in between for safety, you know, in between each car, mm. and then put forms in either side. Forms? Yeah, forms to sit on. Oh, foam, as in? Uh, no, form. Form. Yeah. What? You seven us. <laughs> so a form is a seat, is it? Yes. So you wouldn't I've never heard of that. Form? Yeah. No. Form in a, in a school. Oh, is in a school form? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. A, lo a long bench like seat. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eventually. Benches. benches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you call them, yeah. And uh, so then we used to have to transport the men in to the faces and then leave the paddies and then come out and, and drop onto the coal, wait for the coal being produced into empty cars, fetch it out as many, as many miles as five miles sometimes. Jesus. So you took all the forms out, put them on the side until the next shift? No, sometimes you used to just leave them all ready there, ready for the, because the, the, the miners had got to come out, the yeah. colleagues had got to come out at the end, if there were room to stack them somewhere. Yeah. God, and then so, so the coal would then, so you, how often, okay, how long does it take to fill up a paddy? of coal? So no. You only call them paddies when there were many. Oh, OK. But what are they called when they're not? Empties. So tubs? Tubs? Yes. Tubs. Well, at Brosworth, we were the first ones at Brosworth to have what we call mine cars. Not little tubs, but long mine cars with copper Westinghouse couplings, what you just banged into. Oh. Like the modern ones on trains nowadays, yeah, actually. Yeah. And uh, oh, how long did it take? It all depends if they were filling coal, because the coal used to come out from the face on conveyors, and the, the empties used to run under the end of the, the loader, and it used to fill them up. And then when they got a, a train load full for the locomotive to, to uh, pull out to the pit bottom, they'd uncouple them, let them run down, 
you'd follow them down with the locomotive, couple on and take it out. Right. And we had a, at Broswell they had a, what, a mile long drift went up like that. First gear for about quarter of an hour. Really? Yeah. We, How we, fast is first gear? Three points from a mile an hour. Four revs. Really? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, oh I. And is the diesel smelling? Is the diesel kind of fumes? Oh, very smelly, yeah. Yeah, and noisy. Really? Mm. Quite un unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. And is a one driver, are you the only guy on the machine? Yeah. So you're at the front with the joysticks? Yeah. No steering wheel, just a button on and off and... It were just a, a lever. Ge gearing. What you could pull on and put, put on a ratchet. And, and an air brake. So you, you've got to be extra careful because the air brakes didn't run to the, to the extra mine cars, all the mine cars on the train. So just, to your, just, to just the diesel just had air brakes, so you've got to be very careful because mm. you've got about 20 cars on. What, tw uh, two ton in each, two and a half ton in each? Yes. About 100 ton. So you've got to be careful. It's a hell of an engine then. Yeah, 100 horsepower though. Good. Woodsworth. Because um, the Bentley disaster, there was, there was an accident in the 70s, wasn't there? With a paddy, uh, not a paddy. Oh, there were lots sorry. of accidents. With um, the, the guys, the guys got crushed and I heard from uh, the last uh, Bentley? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about Bentley. Brosworth Hour. Yeah. My uh, brother-in-law got killed at, really? uh, at, at Bullcroft Colliery before they merged with Brosworth. They had a system there, you know, the cage goes up and down, mm. down with empties, shoved the empties off with the coal, and the coal, one full of coal went up. And his job, when it was time for the men to ride, was to shove the empties off. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, yes. Paul. Shove the empties off so that he could get it ready, the cage, for a man riding. As they were doing this, they had like a, he were on the bottom deck, we used to call it, two decks on these cages. And he were on the bottom deck and they used to fetch coal down the, this deck with some catches. We stood up like that on a creeper. He used to lower them down on one of these must have broken, run straight in, into him and smashed him, killed him. What, he dropped? No, it were, it were coming down hill, slight hill, it broke up, broke these, ca the catches were broke or something, it got away, it run into him. He were only 20. Oh, he were at school with me. Mm. Anyway, great kid. Yeah, it was his uh, birthday. Really? Oh no, it, it, what, his birthday was in November, that's right. And uh, his, when he got killed, it was his anniversary this month sometime. I can remember my wife telling me our bill should have been same age as me, or 73, 74. You're not 74. 74 in May. Really? Don't go on. Pretty good. I'm 80. Had <laughs> <laughs> a hard life. <laughs> Bugger you. <laughs> you know, um, you kind of go into this career, you're kind of light hearted and you kind of like, it's going to be fun down the mine and all that sort of stuff. No, I never thought of that. No? But there must be a moment, I'm just thinking, your best mate or your mate at school, you're in this job. And you don't really understand. Maybe you do, but you're thinking, "Oh yeah, there's accidents. They're all over the place." Suddenly, a bloke next close to you gets killed. Is there a sudden moment where you go, "Holy shit, I am in"? Well, there's, I've never been in a position where a, a mate of mine's got killed, but close. Mm. I mean, we were. I graduated up to working on the coal face, at M, and uh, I used to work with a a little bloke partner. We were always together. Johnny Richards, they call him. And our job at that time was to uh, sit in the, have you heard about the chocks? Yeah. All the way up and down. Yeah. And, and we'll, our job was to advance the, uh, the chocks after the- You're not chock docks, chock doctors. Yeah, there were chock doctors, like fitters. 
What yeah. we wasn't one of that. We were just men who advanced, right. face men who, who looked after the chocks and advanced them after mm. the machine had gone by. Right. And it used to all the waste at back used to just flush down eventually. Into the, into the gob? Yeah, gob. As you advance these chocks, everything at back were left up. So every so, a, so often, it used to just collapse. Mm -hmm. First time it frightened me to death. Yeah. And anyway. What's that noise like? like? Just like a roar, it just starts rumbling and then it get, just gets every, the, the heaviest thunder you've ever heard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but this little lad, he was only about five foot Johnny Richards. And he, he got, I don't know how, this, this waste when it came down, this gob, it flushed through these chocks and buried him. Mm. So I finished up getting hold of his ankles and pulling him out. He says, littlest bloody person on my pit. And he says, I had to get in here. <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell. And he survived? Oh, yeah. So he was yeah. under rubble and under the... Yeah, cold and rubbish. So it collapsed the chocks. It just it, knocked the it chocks just out. it just dropped at back of the chocks and then just flushed forward. It just goes. Oh right. Boom. It's like a landslide that yeah. crept underneath yeah. into the supposed safe space. Well, yes. Yeah. Flush through them because there's about a, a, a gap sometimes about a foot God. between each one, and he were unlucky to get that. It's pretty. Um... What happened to the situation that? Does he go up to the surface and just take yeah. a day off? No. Dust himself down and starts away again. Yeah. There's no like procedure going it, it to wasn't, Nothing serious. He wasn't buried long enough. I, I, I dragged him out quick. Bloody hell. <laughs> Did you have to report things like that? Or just, no. just ignore it? Yeah. It was just part of the job. Unless there were injuries, like. <laughs> so that was this incredible noise. And then he goes, oh! The and legs then, stuck. Then, then all, the, all the air come in. So you get this yeah. warm or cold air? Warm. So it's like a hot. Especially in face. Five mile out. Oh, it gets hotter and hotter the further you get out. If, really? Yeah. If, if you're on a face what's near to the pit bottom of the pit shaft, it's, it's usually cold. But further you get out, five miles or so, we used to work in just shorts and boots. Mm. And a, an helmet, nothing else, and a wet through. How long did it take you to qualify to get to the pit face? Well, face. same as I was saying, I, I went graduated from then I, I diesel driving for 12, 12 years. So then I, did you enjoy that? Yes. Was there crack with the with the men? Yeah, good. You'll never get the same camaraderie. Yeah. As as with a. There. So Everybody you, says that. So you're a bit like a bus driver, really. You met mm. him at the end of every yeah, shift. Yeah. What are you doing in between the, the beginning and the end? You're taking the coal out, turning it into tubs, and you're doing coal. Well, first of all, starting with the empties, where the empties come down the pit and then they, they run down all, so that they're all together like a dispatch yard. Mm. Right. So you, you, when it was your turn, you drop down and wait till there were a call to go somewhere, the dispatcher had, had sent you to somewhere to a unit, you'd go there, wait for 20 cars to be filled, and then fetch them out, and then again drop the coal off, and then take your turn to drop back down again. Okay, yeah? Yeah. So you're busy? Yeah. You're very busy? Sometimes, it, yeah, but sometimes... And are you by yourself doing all that? No, you, there were... There's a load of guys. There were other guys there as well. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm just imagining you're doing all of the manual stuff with the coal and the, the, the moving of the, the tubs and stuff. And then at the end of the day, you get 30 guys on the, on the tubs, on your forms. And then fetch them out. And then that's when your crack starts. That's when you chat, you have a chat and you have banter. Mm. And it's quite a nice end to the day. Mm. Nice beginning yeah. and a nice end. And uh, what to remember as well is your time didn't, your shift was say on days, six or well, quarter past one. But you've got to be down the pit in your rags for six o'clock, else you get, got sent home. Oh, right. So you've got to arrive about half an hour before yeah. in, in your, in your civvies, get out of them, 
leave them in your clean locker, walk across, naked, to the other side, get your rags on. Naked? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's then, quite cold then. Mm. Certain times of year. No. They used to be heated pit mats. <laughs> Crikey. So you, you, you were asking about how I graduated to yes. the cold face. Yes, so how long did it take? Well, it all depends on the individual, actually. I mean, I think you could, you could qualify to go on the face or go for uh, uh, training at 18. But I was doing these other jobs, graduated other jobs. And I, I think I went on when I was about 30 old. Right. Did all the jobs in between, like uh, what they call contracting, ripping tunnels out and, yeah. and setting gears and things like that. And, and then the ring, uh, and the rings and the yeah. So you went through nearly every, every job. Well, not every job, but a lot of them. Were you ever a market man? Yes, everybody, every face man, were sooner or later a market man because one, one, when one face finished, they they used to pick another team to go on the next face. So then we would just come off a face with market men. Right. So when you say when a face finished, you mean the actual scene, the whole scene? Mm. When you reach no, the ship? There might be more than one face in a scene, but when you reach the boundaries, say next to, uh, next to us were Ickleton Pit, when you reach their boundary, oh, you stop. Really? Okay, I didn't understand that. So there's a pit five miles away. You They're could, underground. You could take the coal to there. When you got there, you stopped. Because they've, on top, they've actually Because they were, they were probably coming that way to it, to meet you. Wow. So you've actually demarked on top, they've mapped the territories. I suppose so, yeah. And you're underneath going, okay, mm. we could still do valuable work, but they're on the other side. Mm. Yeah. They are, I suppose, God, I suppose a whole, think about it, you've got a hundred foot kind of gallery of Whole face, and you could be more ten, than that, well, whatever it is 200, 300 yards. And you could be 10 yards away on the other side from guys coming the other way, yeah. And sometimes you could come up against some old workings, some old pit workings, and say, Right, that's it, boys, no, no further. So it's a bit like Indiana Jones, you suddenly break into a, mm. you break into a whole underground yeah. cavity, and every now and again. I, I just mentioned, mentioned Dick Eccleton, didn't I? Yeah. We'd got to walk out what they call a second egress, second exit. Everybody in the pit had got to know this second egress in case... Like an uh, escape. Yeah, an emergency. So, you know, you, you, you finish up going down one pit, Rosworth, and, and coming out at uh, Eccleton. Oh, Jesus. Walking. That's incredible. I mean... Without, does it go beyond the bounds of imagination to say you could start at Brodsworth and end up at Hatfield underground? Uh, I don't think it's a bit far that because yeah. could you go from a bit of distance mine in link, between? Yeah, could each mine link up in the, you know, it didn't happen in reality, but it wouldn't be too far of a leap of the imagination to imagine all these mines linking mm. up in the end if you if you pursued it, it as honeycomb. Yeah, I suppose it could do, yeah. Jesus, yeah. and it's all under all under this. There were a lot of subs substance around it because this is what I've just been telling you about the total collapsing, they used to call it, at the back of the chocks. Used to come down. Yeah. Of course, then above it, there were a, a, a void, weren't they? Yeah. And some of the roads sometimes went down and houses. And was there any legislation for that or any kind of. I mean, did you ever did you have to think about that in the planning or did you just like, if it happens, it happens? Because you can never. Well, really... I don't know, but uh, I think. I think when people uh, would uh, complain, like the map were complaining, but I, I, I never heard anybody gain anything for it. No. So, I mean, did you know of properties that would sink in a sink? I mean, I presume they're kind of sinkholes, aren't they, that you'd be creating upstairs? Well, not as drastic as that, but you know, you can go. Cracks in walls. You can go through, yeah, cracks in walls in houses and that, but some of the roads around here, you can see where they've, they've slipped. Wow. You know? I know, I told me. Yeah. Wow. Because the geology is fascinating. I mean, 
the fact that you're collapsing. I mean, I suppose you get, there must be a, I mean, are you, what are you mining? I mean, it, 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 does the rock that you're mining, is it sympathetic to coal, for example? Is there a granite that you know when you get to granite, you get the coal after? Or is it always different? They always used to say, I mean, and I graduated onto the big, have you seen these big uh, coal cutting machines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a big disc. A massive, like, rocket yeah. sort of ends. Well, when you, I didn't do much of that, but I, I did do my training on, on them. And, and they, were, they always tell you, there's so much above the seam, leave a couple of three inches. They used to call that Connie. I don't know what that stood for, but that held the, the roof up until you could get under with the chocks. So the coal was literally a structural thing as well. Mm. That two or three, that kind of kept everything. Oh, in. you could see the coal. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it was quite a strong thing. Oh so yeah, it would hold yeah, it yeah. into play, like yeah. a ceiling. Yeah, between you and the granite. Yeah, is it granite or no, sandstone? Not, or no, limestone? Gra not granite. No, like a limestone, is it or sandstone? Yeah, well, I don't know, but it, this conny were a bit mashy. But we used to hold the roof up. The, the dangerous part of working on a coal face was when the coal face, the roof, gave in. Yeah. And before you could take the chocks under to a safe position, somebody had got to go on top of the chocks in the hole and make that safe Jeez. so that you could advance them. And what, what it used to make me mad at that time was when you've got a situation like that, when, whenever you wasn't cutting coal, you didn't get bonus. Mm. So there were people out by, and you know, people working in different t things connected to NCB, getting paid bonus, and we were working in dangerous conditions, up in an hole where anything could collapse on us any minute, so you were and getting those, nothing. And you were one of those guys up in the hole? Yeah, sometimes. When, when it collapsed, Somebody had got to go up and make it right. Put wood across, you know, and mm. so that you could get under with these chocks. You just go look forward for a second. Yeah. Profile. Is that your natural pose? <laughs> you looking upwards like that? Is that you naturally? No. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you want, natural? I need. Mean, it would be nice. Right. We don't want to save you forever in an unnatural, uh, uncomfortable neck brace. Pose. Yeah. Pose. Yeah, the thing is about mining. When, when you get to working on the coal face and, and you're making top money, you think, this is good, this, I'm not going to get much better here. But the, the thing is, when I came out of the pit, when they closed the pit, my mate were working for DHL. Mm. They just started in this country then in 1990. And uh, it, it were a more or less international couriers job yeah. and I, I trained in that and I, I run more money straight away than I would out really? yeah on face so it changed from your dad's time mm -hmm. which was genuinely like honey yeah you were almost under the impression that you were still on good money yeah but the world outside well, had changed well the thing is if you're in a, a community like like I was at Brodsworth at Woodlands uh, there were no other I mean everything were geared to the pit I suppose you don't mix with people from DHL because you're in the miners' club in the evenings, you're socialising with miners. You have your own kind of community and you're paying all that sort of stuff as relates to the mates around you, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Well, that must have been quite a shock. Yeah, it was a, a, a right shock, I'll tell you, because when you were down the pit, all the under-managers, managers, whatever, you had to call them mister. So, me being down the pit for 30 years, when I went to work for DHL, I'll call this, I will call him this, this manager, Mister. He said, whoa, whoa, don't call me Mister, call me by my first name. It was right culture shock, that one. Gosh. It was right medieval down pit. Yeah, medieval. So of course, that or being in the uh, military service yeah. or something. Another example would be, uh, let me have a drink of tea. Another example would be, my uncle, he's dead now, right, but, he used to live next door to this bloke called George Hayes. He were a manager. And he came down my uncle's pit one day and, and 
he saw him and, and my uncle said to him, I, I hope George, how are you going on? And, and he just tapped him on the shoulder and he says, when you come up, come in my office. And he tore a strip off him when he went up in the office. He said, when I'm down the pit, you call me mister. Jeez. Jeez. And he grew up with him, this bloke. That's how they were. On hindsight, did you like that? Did what? Did you like that culture, that kind of... No. Well, having said that, I didn't know any other. Yeah. Yeah. From 15, I'd, I'd had that. Up to uh, 46 when I came out, when, when the pit closed. So it was like a... I opened when I came out of pit. Brilliant. Fantastic working with people. You call it gaffers by the first name mm -hmm. of that. I was playing badminton with one of them at one time. I couldn't get my head around it. Really? Yeah. Gosh. Did you, pref did you like the work in DHL? Is it yes. In comparison? When I first started, yes, it was brilliant. It's, it's, it's grown a lot now and it's stretched and they were having this trouble with uh, French, no. Kentucky Fried Chicken, aren't yeah, they now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're stretching themselves too much. But yeah. at that time, they were just coming into this country because they're an American country. Yeah. And they were, everything were documents transported to get there the next day. So you got to know all the uh, customs regulations and everything. Were you driving? Yeah. So was it like, okay, so you, you're, you're in a culture and you're working relatively very, very hard, and you're underground and you're a part of this whole world, a couple of weeks or however long it takes for the mind to close and you to get a new job. When you get your new job, it must be like coming out of the dark mm. into a world you get and you must do so, things. You think, am I allowed to do this? Yeah. Am I allowed to do this? Exactly. And you look over your shoulder and you think, I've got a vehicle and I'm by myself on a road 200 miles away yeah. from, from where I should be and no one's on my back. Yeah, exactly. And That's exactly just, how it is. And I can just pull in when I want and... Gosh, it's like you're under a li little bit of pressure, like because you've got to get to certain places at certain times. But, but it's like leaving school and oh, finding yeah. yourself. Yeah. Weird. Age 46 as well. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking, God, it's like going out of jail. God. <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it? Because you think, obviously, everyone talks about the incredible community, the incredible bond, the incredible camaraderie, and all that you talked about already. The crack. Yeah. All this stuff yeah. is brilliant. But never, actually, get, never get the same mates again. No. And yet, you know, working for DHL was a kind of a liberation. Mm. And every time I, I, I drive by Brosworth Pit now, I spit. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hated really? it. Hated the work. Loved the blokes. Did the, only did the work because it was a thing to do in the community. This will be on YouTube tonight, will it? It's on now. Oh. Yeah, you'll be getting it tonight. You sit down and enjoy yourself. No. <laughs> Get a cup of coffee. I was just thinking about my uh, grandson, Callum. Hi, Callum. <laughs> yeah. I've got to concentrate. You carry on talking. Oh, I'm all right. I'm just watching you. <laughs> You've got a very, uh, when you talk, you, your whole face changes. Does it? You've got this incredible stretch in the eyebrows. Have I? Yeah, that, that's it. Do I go for that one, or do I go for... You go come for down, all down. you want. Come down. That's, no, don't frown. <laughs> very, very movable eyebrows. Right. I've got to work out which one to go for. Yeah. So do you mix with your X miners still? Not so much because when the pit closed, or before the pit closed, during the strike, 1984, I sold my, what used to be a pit house, I bought it through Margaret Thatcher making them available, sold it within six weeks, and my missus says, why don't we uh, get a business, go into business? I says, what? We've never, I've never done anything like that. She says, 
Oh, we can't look, and, and I got to thinking about it. We can't look. The worst thing what could happen was make a mess of it and finish it up on door. So I said, why not, we'll give it a go. So we started looking for news agents because oh, right. news agents at least have got a, a, a standard income. Yeah. And we found this leasehold. We didn't buy a shop. We bought the leasehold on this news agent in Harlington, a, a, a village I'd never heard of before mm. this. But finished up uh, enjoying that and wanted to keep on doing it, even though I was getting up at four o'clock every morning, seven days a week, yeah. to get the papers ready. Gosh, and so, so hang on, so how long did you work for DHL for then? Uh, till 2000. So 10 years? Yeah. And then your wife says, let's wait, get a minute, wait a minute, no, must have been, eight, you were 84 the strike, so came out then at we, we got the shot, we stopped in the shot while 88, that's right. And then uh, the pit closed it in 90, so I got redundancy then. Then that's when I went for DHL. So we were in the shop from 84 to 88. Right. And I loved it. And yeah. the idea was to carry on with this after and, and get me redundancy when the pit closed because the the, the rumours were rife then all the pits she was going to close them all down so mm. we were just waiting uh, but when i told the, the personnel officer this he didn't want to know wouldn't give me my redundancy so i finished up working getting up at four o'clock doing the papers going to the uh, warehouse doing things like that and then my missus got up and i I used to go down the pit on afters, regular. After, what's that mean? Afternoons. Oh, okay. 11, 11 o'clock I used to go out yeah. and I used to come in at eight. So, so I was doing two jobs then. Oh, right. And I asked the personnel officer if, if I could have a redundancy early and he wouldn't give it me. Two years later, we closed the pit after we'd sold the shop because we couldn't manage. Jeez. My my missus uh, never thought there were two six o'clocks in one day. She used to get up at six o'clock when I used to go out delivering papers, milk, bread. So you're doing this while you're mining? Mm. And then going, I was going down afternoon shift. Bloody hell. But I wasn't on the face then. Hmm. When I got the shop, I asked if I could come off the face. So I was just doing me a uh, meager job on, on a button, watching the buttons, end of it belt or something like that. That must have been the hardest time of your career. I don't know. I used to, same as I say, I used to enjoy the shop. Yeah. So it, it, it didn't... Feel like work? No. So, sorry, I'm going to be confused here. Your DHL career came when the mining finished? No. I started in... Uh, when, when the pit closed in 1990. So in 84... I went in the shop till 88. Yeah. And then you worked on in the pit till for another year or two, until the pit closed. Till 90. And then you went into DHL. Yeah. And the village that you'd never heard of, how far was that from the pit? <laughs> that's, that's amusing. Uh, only five or six miles. <laughs> yeah. That's how, how much you get engrossed in, in a community. Yeah, yeah. Wow. God, you really were in it hook, line and sinker, weren't you? Mm. There were a lot of people. Mm. Because the pit then were, were the thing for everybody. Yeah. Everything revolved around that. Shops, businesses, everything. So when she closed pits down, she closed communities down. Yeah, yeah. Villages and everything. Yeah. Were you a, an active striker in the sense of a... Oh, I didn't work. No. You didn't go back to work, no. And I had uh, been on strike duty before that, uh, picket, on pickets, Yeah. We Arthur, great Arthur. Really? Because how long was the striking going on before? I mean, there was obviously a culture of it. I think the 
There were a strike in 1972 when I went to, on the picket line. And there were one in seven, oh, I'm going ahead of myself here. 72 I went on, on the picket line and we went on stopping ships unloading coal coming from abroad. All right. At Emingham. That's near Hull. And then uh, I left the pit for a year. I went to the uh, power station at Egbra as a fitter's mate. Hmm. Of course, a couple of my mates had left, who I used to work with in the diesel garage maintenance, and told me it was good. The money was good, shifts were terrible. They were continental shifts, and you used to start nights on a Friday night, plus seven nights. I didn't like that. I, I stuck it for a year, and then I went back to Pitt. Right. And you were striking in that time? The, the Immingham strikes were in the 70s? 72, I think that was. And how did they, did they resolve the issue? Yes. Did they work? In a sense, so you stopped the imports of coal from I Immingham? I think we got a rise. You got a pay rise? Yeah, and and we, we, these, we stopped that ship, particular ship, because the dock workers agreed with us, so they wouldn't un unload it. But was it a permanent thing? I and mean, did you permanently stop the imports of coal? Or was it just a one-off? Just one that off? one ship for, ship for me. Right. So the, the, prob the object of the strike was not to stop the whole import of coal so you keep your own minds open. Mm. It was just about your pay. Mm. I think that particular time, around £19 a week, our diesel drive in there. Diesel locomotive drive. And uh, our, uh, we were on a picket line, and uh, this policeman who was with us wouldn't believe where I was on 19. He says, You're working out pit for 19 pounds. I mean, 72, it's hard to believe, isn't it? But he wouldn't believe me, this, this, this policeman. Really? And we, we got a big rise then. When did the National Coal Board get involved? When did it move from coal? Coal, from private ownership to the coal board? What dates? Oh, I don't know. It was NCB when I started in 1959, oh, so it was quite 60. And I think that then they went private when she closed the lockdown. Yeah. That's it. Mm. Yeah. And the strike only started, you know, because our union had got a mandate. If she closes a pit down, we were going to come out and strike. So she knew. Yeah. So she closed one down, didn't she? Just to see what it was like. Yeah, just to take us on. And we lost. Yeah. How long were you? How long did it last? A year. A year. And. Uh, during, it was about six months, halfway through, when I, when I uh, moved into this shop. And uh, that's how I kept my family. The shop? Mm. So you went full time in the shop, really? Mm. And I, Did and the I, shop have hard times because of the strike? No, because it, even though there were a pit at Barmbra, which is next door to Arlington, most of the village didn't work at the pit. Oh, really? No. So, it were, it, it, were, it were good for that way. So if you were actively striking, were you working in the shop certain hours and then going down to the, to the pit to, to sign in, as it were, and stand outside the no, entrance? No, no. No, while ever I were in the shop during the strike, no, we didn't have to go down. No. But up until then, we were having to go to the local welfare and get food and things like that. Yeah. And when, when I sold the house, moved in with my dad, yeah. mum and dad, until we found this shop. I used to enjoy it. What, living with your dad? No, the shop. <laughs> because there were a pub 10 yards away. Oh, really? Oh, brilliant. And you get a real part of the community, because everybody wants thinks that everybody's got a shop, got plenty of money, so can you 
yeah. do this for us, will you give us a prize for this, will you do that? And so you get involved. Yeah. Put this poster up. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Used to do my own, uh, used to go to the abattoir and do all my uh, boning yourself. You? Your butchery came out. Mm. Must have done. Yeah. I was shown how to do it like, but I used to do it then. And that was legal then. Otherwise you couldn't do it now, could you? Well, I don't know. I don't see why not, because it were a proper abattoir where we used to get the meat from. So it was a big shop by the sound of it, you had your own meat? No, it wasn't a big shop, it was only a small corner shop, convenience store. Is it still there? Yes. But when I had it, it, it was leasehold. Now I think somebody's, somebody's bought the leasehold and owns it, and they've done it up. It's a lot to nicer now. Did you go in? No. Don't have occasion to. Curiosity. No, I've been by it, drove by it, but I would never go in. What, what would you say? I used to own this. Or, or used to uh, have this shop. Sometimes see some of the people, the villagers who used to be mm. customers. What kind of a time scale have you got for this uh, sculpture oh, then? Well, I think we're going through kind of the early stages and I think it'll be a end of next year, mid next year. I think we'll get to a point where we've finished it, mm -hmm. whatever it's going to be. So you've not made your mind up yet? I'm what? very close. I'm mm -hmm. thinking now... Because uh, Daniel was talking, maybe you wanted to do 60 heads and yeah, you're yeah. not sure what you're going to do. Well, it's a, question of, um, it's a question of now how people, the community, take on what basically the situation is going to be. I've got a plan now. I've got much further along where I want to be. I want to incorporate... This, this process is really interesting. And it's a proper kind of chat with people. And they are seeing what I do. And, I, you know, there's no other way I can, you know, put what I do across, like, in any other way than just showing people how I work, you mm -hmm. know. So we have this thing, we have conversations with you, and you have this incredible wonderful time and it seems um, silly to ignore it and you know in these, each of these heads now represents a conversation each of these heads has got a film attached to it it's been silly I mean why why would I throw these away I'm going to cast them into mm. bronze what use do they have well maybe I should carry on with this and make carry on all year do every month and month and month come and do six heads and um, maybe put them into the end piece turn Probably. it into a kind of um, you know, a monument to the real people. Because I remember those, those talks we were doing, mm. everyone had so many different ideas and so many different needs and requirements. I thought, I can't, with one big image, ever really sum up what these people believe and what they want. And it's not really my place. But what I can do is represent the people mm -hmm. and put all their stories in a piece together. So I'm thinking. So where does the YouTube go in? The YouTube will come, for example, if I put How all these. How's that tie in? If I put all these in a big sculpture, and you like every, all these 60 heads were in a sculpture and each head had a film attached to it and there'd be um, either names or barcodes or whatever on, on, on the interpretation boards you'd go who's that head and you'd go onto the website and you go oh it's it's keith mm -hmm. and what is he what was his story i go well, you click on there, you get a film of keith you get this all so my grandchildren will have yeah, something yeah. to look at when yeah. i'm gone yeah so you'll have a whole kind of like they see the sculpture is there in the, in the high street in bronze. Where, where is it in going that to be? State, in that state now. Where well, we're looking at around the council offices. There's new buildings going on where the National Coal Board used to be. Mm -hmm. There's a load of sites around there that they're Waterdale. Thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's sites around those places that people are looking at. And would you let us know yeah, if yeah, yeah. if I'm on it where it's going to be? Yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be heavily involved. Don't you worry. You're you're stuck now. <laughs> I'm going to give you a plaster of the head. Hey, yeah. You get a plaster of it. And so, but ba basically, that's the idea at the moment. So we've got, in Mar May, I'm going to do another session of these, so we have 18 heads. 
and then in May we're going to have a... What, the same kind of thing, what you've done so far with, yeah, with yeah, me? Yeah, there'll be 18 of them. Mm. So there's, there's five in the bucket now. There's six we did last month. Mm -hmm. By the time we've done another lot, there'll be another load. And then we're going to take a shop over in Frenchgate and have an exhibition of the And heads. will you let us know about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll be, your heads will all be there and my drawings that you've already seen, a lot of them, load more and other sculptures and proposals. Yeah. So the public can come in and uh, have a look and hopefully have an opinion and hopefully be impressed. Yeah. And then we'll be given sanction to start. So it really is a public thing. And then I start my, and I'm hoping by that stage, maybe if I still like this idea, this idea is the one that goes on, then I've got 18 heads, head start. I've got a head start. <laughs> and uh, and then it just builds and builds and builds really incrementally, very slowly, head by head by head. I get involved with a quarry maybe, and we start talking about a massive piece, maybe a stone, giant, giant thing, you know, 15 foot wide, 10 foot high, and maybe in a big piece of rock and granite or sandstone, whatever, it could be white or the malt beast quarry. Maybe I carve in niches, you know, receptacles like a lot of cathedral, or like a, some of those Iranian cities I showed you. Mm -hmm. like, like in a seam going around, and these heads are in this coal seam, coal faces, all the way around, oh, yeah. you know, uh, a rich seam. All this like mining language is all there. Mm -hmm. And that maybe all these heads will have, a story, will have their stories told. And I'm not then trying to sum everyone up in one big, fantastic image. And if you start to try and work out big, fantastic images, you go on online and nearly every mining sculpture that's ever been made has been made. But this hasn't. This is a genuine kind of engagement. And it's building up out of... Um, yeah, it's nice to know that there's going to be something in Doncaster. Yeah. To denote what happened. Yeah. Because it were all mining at one time. Yeah. But now it's dying. Yeah. Yeah, and if you think about it, in 50 years time, all these guys, all these faces are going to be there and all their films are going to be attached and it's a generation of people that um, have been recorded and have been acknowledged and their stories are told. Yeah. And I'm quite excited about that. Mm. So I'm hoping <coughs> that something along those lines is, is where we go. So to get into this YouTube then, yeah. What, what do you just put? You'll get it. The, the Lawrence Daniel Edwards. Time. No, you put Doncaster College at the moment. Doncaster College. And uh, it'll be on there. Danny, right. I'll give you the address. Right. And um, yeah, then you'll see the films of all the other guys. Yeah. There's, um, oh, it's very interesting. Yeah, they've all their stories have been told. And it's quite an interesting film, I think, because this sculpture is emerging at the same time as yeah the stories. You're getting to know. The, uh, the people as their stories are coming through. It's very interesting. Mm. I mean, I find it interesting just because I don't know how I work. I've never seen myself work. It's like, oh God. So, what you've been doing, are you been coming up occasionally up here yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or stopping up here? Or? Yeah, yeah, I stay up. I was, this is the second kind of four day visit. And where do you stay? In the Regent. Regent? Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I've been in there. Yeah, it's lovely. For a wedding. Yeah. So is Daniel taking you out at night and things like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy, enjoying good I'm, Yorkshire beer? I am, yeah. I've had a great time. I go around this recovery tonight. Mm. I know, I'm really getting an affection for Doc. Meeting people like you and, and doing these. Yeah, real affection for the town. Do you, do you find northern people more friendly than southerners? Southerners? I'd say they're more open. Yeah. More happy to talk. Yeah. Um, and they're... Uh, they, I, often you go Yorkshire pride and all that sort of stuff, but I'd say it wasn't necessarily pride, it's more knowledge of their identity. Mm. They understand what they are. Oh, we are, yeah. Yeah, they really understand who they are, and as a result, and I think it comes out of this mining culture, 
and things like that, where they understand they were a part of something. Mm -hmm. When I go back down south, you know, after these trips, I think, um, gosh, that doesn't exist down there. It does not exist where I'm going to, back home. It doesn't, mm. There's no such thing as... No. As I, kind I of think culture. they had a different conception as well of the strike down south. Yeah. They, they, they had no idea what was going on. No. No. It's a bit like, um, you know, Beirut was on the telly, the Lebanon was on the telly, mm. and the miners' strike was on the telly. Yeah. It was all about the same distance, you know. Yeah. And every now and again, you, you drive on your holidays up to Nairsborough, and you go through a few towns, you think, God, that was where the bloody strike was. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a walking club, me and the wife, and, and we go walking with this uh, club every, every month. We're going to uh, Halifax next time, walking. Yeah. Mm. Are you into walking? Yeah. We do a holiday every autumn, half term. We go on a family. We do the Ridgeway or the, or the like, Dorset coast, you know, the, mm. the Jurassic coast. So whereabouts exactly do you live with them? In East Anglia, Suffolk, in East Anglia. S that's just below, below Norfolk, isn't it? Yeah, so. yeah. Lower Stoft and mm. Ipswich. We've been to Great Arms and that. Yeah, that's, that's where, we, where we are. Mm -hmm. It's very farmy. Agricultural mm -hmm. and fishing, and increasingly now tourism. And look at all the cottage, I don't know if it happens up here. Got a lot of cottage come holiday cottage companies are now buying up all the properties. Mm. And uh, a bit of controversy about it, didn't they? Yeah, people are going buying holiday homes, stopping them in a couple of days, a couple of three days a year, and then yeah, not, yeah. Not, not the rest of the year. Do you get it up here? Uh, I was reading something in the paper about it, yes. Not, not so much Doncaster, but uh, the uh, tourist areas. Scarborough and such as yeah. that. Do you like Doncaster? I uh, don't have much to do. You mean the centre itself? Yeah, the town, are you? No, I don't, do don't, you I don't do shopping. So I don't come shopping with the, with the wife. She goes on her own. Do you feel Doncaster is your town? Or are you more like, this is my village? Well, now we live in between Doncaster, we live at Mexper, and we live in between Doncaster uh, and Rotherham. But I uh, just generate to Doncaster more than Rotherham. Mm. Yeah. So were you fit when you were down below underground? Mm -hmm. Were you the fittest you ever been? Um, Having said you're walking all the time. Well, did you have to think about your fitness after you left? Not really. We were, we were walking, other than being in a club. While when we were young, at like we used to do about 50, 12, 15 miles a day at one time. But now we we're struggling on on eight. But uh, I used to be like a twig spider. Did you? You're a really thin guy. Mm. Until I went on the face, and then that, I was I used to call that my my gym. Really, you beefed up. Mm. Did you like that? Yeah. Now I've got a bit of that on. You can be forgiven at your age. Right, if you just stay still a sec, I'll mm -hmm. work out his eyes. I'll work out your eyes. You've got a very expressive face. Nightmare. I, don't I like, have. I don't like say? expressive faces. All right. They change too much. I thought that you would have liked that. Yours moves too much. Very friendly one. <laughs> Good in other circumstances. <laughs> I 
think there's a moment in about, they tell me, in about an hour and a half in, where it suddenly starts to become the person. Know, about 45 minutes in, are we? Uh, it's five past two. Spin up that. And get your eyes. Sometimes when you try to sort out a problem in the front, you go to the side. It looks different. And the answer's there. You're an arrow. Cheers, is. You've got to keep moving. You stay still. Sometimes you get comfortable, you start telling the story and you think I should be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And you think, no, I should be around the back. I didn't think I could do this when I first started, so I didn't think it would be possible to talk to people and do it in two hours. Well, is it, it must be working out right, yeah? It's all right, it's better than I expected it. I expected you plastering stuff on my face. Did you? Yeah, I didn't know what to expect, really. Making a cast. Yeah, no. This way, make an interpretation of the person. Mm hmm. You try and get a bit of their bluster. Sometimes it's kind of sympathy or empathy, or sometimes it's they're revealing things that they hadn't expected to. Hmm. I can imagine that. It's strange. Sometimes it's just like a hairdressing session. Yeah. You where you go and what's the weather like, and you know there's not much going on. But sometimes people really start to. Think that actually I haven't spoken reveal themselves. Yeah. Or haven't spoken about this for. You know, 20 years. Mm. I'm going to go for that. I like it, that angle. All right. It's good. That probably means if we do you in the, um, in the final piece, you'll either go low down, be looking up, or you'll be high up, and you'll be looking up to the sky. All right. Let's have a look. We're nowhere near yet. We can see resemblance. Do you? Yeah. You see more than I can. You wait till I've finished. <laughs> At the moment, all I see is problems. What problem? There is no likeness whatsoever. So I can't put it right for you then? By doing something? Well, you can keep quiet for a while. All right. But that's not the point of the whole thing, is it? Half I'll, of me's I'll thinking, do whatever you'll say. Half of me is thinking, we're trying to entertain the grandchildren here. <laughs> They'll be laughing the red off. What's their name again? Callum. Callum? Hello? Uh, and Annabelle. Annabelle? That's a nice name. How old's Annabelle? Leah and Isabel. Good lord, there's tons of them. Are they young or are they old? Am I talking to 20 year olds really? No, 13 to 20. Which one's 20? The one who's here oh, in a, in oh, a yeah. lecture now. Really? You're going to meet her for a coffee after? Well, I told her I was going to be here, but she said, I'm, I'm in a lecture 113. I said, well, that's my appointment time, so whether we do or not, I don't know. Put a bit of hair on you. It's, it's <laughs> oh, you. please, can you, can you <laughs> put some <laughs> there? Cover that one up. <laughs> it's amazing what difference that sort of thing makes. Mm-hmm. Back of your head, so you have to excuse me for a minute. Yeah. So they do you see them a lot, your grandkids? Yes, very close family. Yeah. One lives at Armthorpe, which is down the other side of town, and one lives at Sprotbury. I don't know if you know it. That side of town. Yeah. And what is that? Every weekend type thing? Yeah, sometimes uh, more. No time to yourself. Are you a babysitting granddad? We're more of a dog sitting granddad oh, really? now. They go away on holiday, we look after the dog. 
And where are Christmases? The what? Where are your Christmases? Do they all entertain you for Christmas or do you have more over? Well, well we do it between us. The uh, eldest daughter, she didn't want us to be on her own so this, this year, so they took us out for a meal, out for a Christmas meal. Right. Uh, but before, we, we've been to the other daughters, or they've come to us. Yeah, we work it between us. Do they know, are they, are they well versed in your mining past? Oh yes. They know full well. Is there stories that come out regularly? I've got to be careful when I go to the eldest daughters, mm -hmm. because her husband is a very big Thatcherite. Oh crikey. So wow. we don't speak about it. Holy moly. In front of him. How did that happen? He's an accountant. Oh, right. Good man to know. Mm. Bet you took a long time to have to deal with that. Yes. I, I don't deal with it, I just don't approach the subject. Yeah. Did it take a long time to learn that? Yeah. When he married my uh, eldest daughter, my marriage speech was, my missus went in this bookshop to buy a Thatcher book for the son-in-law and I stopped outside, I wouldn't go in. Jesus. I refused to go in. Pretty damn emotional, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Still is now. I know. Thirty years after. I've come. I mean, since I've been here, you know, I've become quite still militant. Still bitter. Yeah. It's just the the village where I used to live when I was at the at the mine, Woodlands. Mm. They run a lot of the scabs out of, out of the village. Put really? the windows through and run them out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was very bitter. And where did those, I mean, was there many? Well, half a dozen, a dozen, so. No, some, some of them, the, the wives, you drove them back into work because they couldn't manage no money. Very hard. Did you deep down have any sympathy with, well, the, with their plight? Yes, because the one lad used to work with me and uh, he were a great kid, but his wife were a bit... Top. Uh, over the top. She, she ruled the rules, so she drove him back and, you know, you don't, you don't see him again. He, he got, he's gone. God, if you could, in, sort of, what's the word? Design a way to break up a community. She did it. Yeah. And not one, just one community. Yeah, yeah. It, it were every community what had a pit. Yeah. No, it's the one thing that. Right, well, she comes out in every session. Mm. I did a dance when she died. Mm. Yeah. There's a, there's a local village called Goldthorpe. Yes, we had a guy, Keith Tonkinson from Goldthorpe. And he told you the story, did he? No, what's that? I think they organised a party or something on a, on a death. Really? Mm. God. Did it get um, publicity? Publicity? Yes. Local, look north. Wow. Did they make an effigy? <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, 
couple of minutes of quiet eyes and we can get there. Quiet eyes. Interesting turn. Mm. I'm loving this job though. I'm loving the, um, for me, to get all these models just coming in. It's incredible. Interesting faces, you know. I think what, what draw, draw, drives most people in is because, same as what I was saying, they don't want it, the community as it used to be to be forgotten. Yeah. At least there'll be something after we've gone. Yeah. And this way I feel they are actually literally in it, in this, with this idea, particular, particular idea, they're in the sculpture. Mm -hmm. The people that want, have the passion. There are, there are passion, you know, there are a lot of people that haven't got the passion. Mm. And um, they won't be in the sculpture. But the passionate ones are the ones that come here and go, do you know what, this is great what you're doing and we want to be a part yeah. of it. And um, we care about our history. And um, want, to, want to get involved. I wanted my missus to come in because yeah. they, they played a, a big part in all the wives well, during the strike and that. I do need women. Mm -hmm. So maybe we come in and get her to do her head. She got a good head. <laughs> I don't know. I'm what sure it's attractive. Call a good head. I like a little bit of bone structure, big feature. I can't talk about your head. You mean the youngest daughter used to say, "Granddad, you've got an hole in your head." <laughs> <laughs> that comes from working down the pit. Yeah. Scr hair. Scratching the helmet on your head. Yeah, you've got more hair than me, so I wouldn't worry too much. <laughs> I'm not worried. It's no, no good worrying, is it? It's not going to come back. So back to your ancestry. So your grandfather was a butcher or your father was a butcher? My, my father. And what was your grandfather? He was a miner who came up from Ilkeston, which is in Derby, right. to Bentley for the, pit, a, for the pit. So what period of time are we talking? Was this 30s and 40s? Or? Ooh, now then, before that, I don't know. So my, my dad was born in 21, so it would be before then. I would have thought. Wow. So he'd be working in Bentley in the 1920s and 30s? Yes. He was a, a lancer, I think. He used to be a, you know, mount, in the mounted army, my granddad. Oh, really? Yeah. What, so he fought in? I don't know which war. I would have thought First World War, yeah. Or, or maybe the ball, or I don't know. Yeah. So does that mean he was riding a horse? Yes, I think so. Jesus. You're not curious to do the research? Well, I got so far and then uh, lost interest. But uh, there's, there's not a lot on him, really? grand, my granddad. On his brigade or his...? No. I did the research on me, me dad. I went down to uh, uh, Arsenal, Woolwich Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Because they were in Royal Artillery. Oh, really? Mm. And, and I got all his uh, research there, but his, his background. And there's the stuff you didn't know? Yes. One of them was very. Uh, liberated one of the uh, prisoner of war camps and uh, it, it, I've got a faint recollection he said Belson Crack. but we never got that far in the uh, in the uh, archi uh, archives because we've got to come back and catch the train and you're tempted to go and have another look I've got his medals above my bed. Really? Was he like you? What do you mean by that? There's a mischievous grin no, on his face. <laughs> sometimes, I'll tell you, in his heads, sometimes they go, God, it looks like my dad. 
and you, you might go and say that, or you might say it looks like my mum, like my mum. What was your mother like? Mm. Very, what's the word, maternal? All oh, right. Loving. Mm? Loving. And your sister? Where she she? died, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think she was age 50. Oh, really? Never smoked in her life, died of lung cancer. Oh, God. From uh, asbestosis. Really? Mm. So what does she work in? She didn't work in asbestos, but what we seem to think is that the, she had a bungalow and uh, right at the side of her was a, a, a warehouse with a uh, asbestos roof and when they demolished it there were a white powder everywhere so oh, we right. seem to think that she got it there Jeez. we're not sure what are you going to do I, th this cast what you're on about are you going to make a cast now or s yeah. later and, and send it no, to me. These come home to the foundry. I've got four or five, six people working for me and I've got apprentices and trainees. And these are brilliant to train people mold making. And so they'll go back and I've got an Italian. So I'll not get one today then? No, no, no. It takes a long time. So, I mean, how does that come? Do I have to come and collect no, it? No, 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 it all comes back up here. In that, I think in that May, when I do that May exhibition, I'm going to try and make a presentation of the plaster heads. We're going away in May. Well, I'll make sure you're all right. May, May 18th? OK, well, we'll try and plan it around you. <laughs> but you'll get it. Yeah. And uh, basically now it goes back to the foundry. I built my own foundry because it cost five or six hundred quid to get this cast in bronze. Mm -hmm. so, we ended up training myself and building my own foundries. Yeah, that came out on that yeah, yeah, lecture. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, and now I'm lucky to... Have you got one up here? Or, or do you have to well, send what, it down? Yeah, it's my foundry in Suffolk. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're working there now. We've got a bronze pour tomorrow. So um, I've got to get back for the bronze pour. So we've got about 30 sculptures to cast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So they've been in a kiln all week at 500 degrees, the moulds, and there are plaster and grog moulds and these waxes have been inside them. And the wax has melted out and leaving holes, mm -hmm. spaces, negative spaces, which are the exact replicas of sculptures. And then we're going to pour hot metal at 1,100 degrees into the moulds tomorrow. Be interesting to see. Yeah. Well, we have a, for example, we've got about 20 people coming tomorrow. We have always have visitors. We have a viewing gallery. And they will stand up there and watch. So, what about say in Norfolk then? Suffolk. I mean, Suffolk. Suffolk. Um, a place called the, the studio is in a place called Halesworth. Where? Halesworth. Halesworth. Which is near, well, it's sort of 20 miles south of Lowestoft. Mm. There's towns called uh, like Southwold, these tourist towns, right near the coast, about 10 miles from the coast. On an industrial estate there. Mm. So if you're down our way. Yeah. Yeah, so tomorrow we've got them. The first two or three heads actually have been done tomorrow. There was a young boy's well, head we did. Doing it in bronze. Yeah. Mm. The cast, I'm trying to cast them. I'm trying to keep up with it. Yeah. Because, um, A, I want to exhibit them here in May. And B, I want to see how they look like, what they look like. Because the bronze changes everything completely. All these marks that look so buttery and wrong suddenly become metal. Yeah. And they're there forever. And you suddenly join the ranks of every bronze sculpture that's ever existed, you know, from, from the Bronze Age to now. You kind of, there's a sense of history about them, mm -hmm. which is always very interesting. So they become kind of authoritative objects. And um, so I'm interested. We've got a boy tomorrow, and we've got a young... She was an activist, actually, a girl called Rachel Horn. She was one of the first ones last week, last month. She runs the magazine called Donkapolitan. Mm -hmm. 
We're pouring her tomorrow. Sounds bizarre, doesn't it? Pouring her. And then there's four others that we did. And then your lot will be following. So these guys, they'll go back and then the new two young trainees will be straight into the moulds. And they take, each mould takes about three or four days to make, a rubber mould. And then we um, have to make another wax. So this wax, I'm going to keep these waxes, I'm not going to destroy these. So we make another wax. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that goes in the mould, in the other mould, the fireproof mould. So when, when uh, Doncaster Council commissioned it then, did they have a date in mind for you to I think have it ready? Before the mayor's next election, I, that was kind of All right. the idea. Uh, and when's that next year? 2021. 20, 21. She came in last year, I think. Again. So we'd like to do it within her tenure. Um, so, and you know, I've got, as you saw in the talk, I've got other big projects on the go. So. <coughs> Yeah, you know, we've got to work it all out in timetable and all. Mm -hmm. But I think with this idea, it's, it's on the go all the time, which is really nice. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're it. enjoying it. Yeah, I am. I've kind of avoided public art projects because I know they're full of bureaucracy and mm. other people's. Have we had much trouble from council? Oh, no. Interference? No, not yet. Mm. It might happen. I haven't really had a chance to sort of view what the project is yet. Mm -hmm. But you know, the hearts are definitely in the right place. They definitely want to, they're sincere about this. They're not, it's not token in them, it's something they believe in. Yeah, it would be with being dunkster mining. Yeah. Especially if, I don't, I don't know her history, but she might be yeah, she is, yeah, I think daughter, daughter of a wife, miner, yeah. Arthur Scargill's wife were involved a lot, you know, really? in the strike, yeah. So it might be, I don't know whether you'd be interested in getting, getting in touch with her. She was very active. What did she do? What did she do? Yeah. She organised the wives and, uh, you know, the uh, food and things like that really? for, the, for the miners, yeah. Did you have much to do with Arthur Scargill? Did you see him, meet him? Yes, I did meet him. He came down our pit. This was before the strike, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, ca he came along the face, and at that time I was working on, on what we used to call a lip then, where the where you, end of the face, they used to make the, the tunnel, which followed the face. And he came, out, came from out of the face and talking to us. Did you like him? Oh, yes. My hero. Really? He did a lot for compensation. Yeah. That's why we've got a good pension scheme. Because the mining community and the kind of they were looking, they looked after all aspects of life, really, didn't they? They were almost like replacing the council in mm. the sense of the facilities, the clubs, the sport. Well, the infrastructure. We we used to live on a road, what they call a welfare road. Oh, really? At Woodlands. And that, the, the uh, welfare, big building there, used to, used to, uh, they used to hold everything there. Everything used to go off. And uh, they used to have a cycle track. Gosh. They've got a cricket pitch, football pitch. Everything were organised there. And now we play bowls on the uh, welfare green. It's still called the Welfare Green. Pardon? It's still called yes, the Welfare Green. Yes, Broadsworth Welfare Bowling Club. And are they all ex-miners you play with? Well, mostly. We're only associate members. We're not uh, members who uh, take part in the competitions. Like We're not competitive. So there's just four of us, two couples, go down and we pay so much just all to right. play on a Friday and then we, we have about a couple of hours, a couple of three hours, and then we go for a, a, a for our lunch in a pub, local yeah. pub.
gave a talk in Woodlands. Whereabouts? In the Woodlands Club. Park Club? Yeah. It was one of my first talks when I did my tour. Oh, right. Sadly, Doncaster were playing Rotherham at the time. And, and it's happening again this weekend. Is it really? Yeah. Is it? Actually, even the drive there was quite, quite an eye opener. There was a lot of fans on the road with police mm. on their horses. I thought, God, this is like, it used to be in the old days. <laughs> mm. Incredible. And I got there to do my talk. So who entertained you there then? Because I'd probably know them all. Well, look, Jim Mouncey was the guy. Yeah? No, he not Jim Mouncey. John. John, John sorry. John he used Mouncey. to be our... Uh, Is he Rod was he Brodsworth? Yes. He used to be our union rep. Yeah. He was a, he's a character, isn't he? I think I might try and get to do his head, actually. Because mm. I think... You'd have to need a lot of wax. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> I do need a translator. Oh, I right. Proper Geordie. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. Be new to you, will that? <laughs> there were a lot of Geordies coming out to Yeah, pay. yeah. I had a couple uh, yesterday from Durham. Mm. Wonderful people. Yeah. Oh, I like Geordies. John Tempest yesterday. John Tempest. Brilliant. Yeah. I'll show. I'll introduce you in a minute. He's yeah. in the bucket. Right. <laughs> John Tempest. I used to know somebody called Tony. Tony yeah. Temp. Oh, right. oh, Temple. 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 Albert Tempest. I used to be at school with. Really? From from uh, Skeller. The, the local pit there was Bullcroft. That's mm. where the uh, brother-in-law got killed. Oh, Bullcroft? Mm. It's not there anymore. Well, that's the sad thing about this. They completely are. Yeah, but this was, this was shut down before Thatcher. Really? Mm. An old pit. Well, I'm going for an eye now. I'll be quiet then. Mm, just don't stare me out either. You're intimidating. <laughs> You'll have to look at me. I might be intimidating. Not in the least. Uh, I've enjoyed your company. Uh, <laughs> You're going to go, what does that taste like in a minute? Can I have some? I've been wondering. I think I'll give you a smiley crow's foot. You deserve that. All right. You've been relatively entertaining. <laughs> I bet you say it to all of them. <laughs> You'll see. My missus says I'll, I'll talk to anybody. Yeah. That's probably why you, the shop was so pleasurable for you. Mm. We made a right go of it. Yeah. In two years, we do all the takings. Really? Mm. So I didn't understand why you stopped it. Because I was working at the shop and the pit, mm. and the wife was working six while six. It, we just can do it too much. So we had to pack it in and. Then. So what does your son-in-law do? He's a... Mm, what to do with money, what is it? Oh, what, accountant. Accountant, yeah. He, he started off working for somebody and he's a self-made man. He's now a partner, him and his partner owns it. Oh, great. And your daughter? Are you talking about the accountant's daughter? The accountant's wife. Wife. She doesn't work, she just stops it on. Yeah, looks she after, after the, the kids. Yeah, kids in, in the house. 25 minutes left. Really? Whew. Right, we're going to have to do some closed. We'll do this eye next. Right. Didn't you used to say you came from uh, Armthorpe, Daniel? Home lives in Armthorpe. Hey, your mum? Home lives in Armthorpe, yeah. yeah. Well, that's where my other daughter lives. 
Is it? On Fiddler's Drive, is it? That estate? No, she lives... Um, That's where my daughter lives, I mean. Yeah. One was... Uh, Pit Top? No. What's the street called now? It's all the trees. Poplar. Yeah. It it's the same as Skeller. Yeah. They're all named the same. Yeah. Birch. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I um, lived in Woodlands as well, so really learned. Really what about in Woodlands? Oh, no estate, you told me. Shaftesbury Avenue, Avenue, yeah. My, uh, I used to have an auntie live on, on Osborne Avenue. Oh, yeah. I live in Osborne right now. Mm. Are we running out, of, running out of time? Oh, we are. Because we've been talking too much, yeah. is that it? Yeah. <laughs> There's not been much silence, I'll tell you that. I've been mm -hmm. trying to do work while listening. <laughs> He's got you on the telly in there. Oh, right. I bet that were interesting. Have you got the address for me for this uh, YouTube? YouTube. I've heard that conversation as well. Oh, okay. what, what I'll do is I'll email you the link and then that'll be the easiest way for you to... What, tonight? I'll do it before you... So, uh, so I can tell kids to watch it tonight? Yeah, there we are. All they've got to do is go into YouTube, type in Doncaster College. If they click that, they'll go into the YouTube page and then they'll see it there. Right. I brought down. Getting bossy now. Let me get in there, Dan. Second, sir. Is this one getting there? Yeah. He's been very distracting, this one. He's too interesting. If I don't keep. Too much of a flatterer you are. I'm not at all. Don't you start that Yorkshire shit with me. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. <coughs> I can't swear either. Watch out. Like okay. No telly. ladies telly. present. Oh, of course we're on telly. Yeah. You bring it out in me. I do feel a bit rushed on this one. But there's two hours before the next one, isn't there? If I can go on another ten minutes if I need, can't I? Yeah. Does, is that the front of the building where the lay-by is? Go Through, down there. Oh, go just, down there. No, I was just wondering, you. my missus says she'd be there at, at three. Well, what I'll do is I'll go down at three. She'll have the shop in the car as well, won't she? Mm. It's a white Nissan Note. White Nissan Note. What, what we'll do is if we get to three, we decide we need ten more minutes. I'll nip down. Mm -hmm. Or I could her, ring her. Show her where to park. Bring her up. To ten, and then nip back down. She wouldn't come up last time because I've been talking to uh, Lawrence about it. You need some women, he says, but she's a bit shy. It's not really an option when I'm around. <laughs> so if you ask people. And they got a chance to say, oh, well, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you kind of just land them in the situation, then uh, you, t you tend to be able to they stand there thinking, I really want to say no, but he's really convinced he's not actually asked me. Or <laughs> mm. well, if you asked her, put her on spot, she'd, she'd come, she'd respond. She's just not forthcoming. I'll say, come, let's, let's just go and see. He's got 10 minutes left. Let's go and meet. You okay? Because usually you do modelling. Say Usually you're doing portraits. They have to stay dead still. This lot, you're catching people, it's like animation. I don't know whether that's a compliment or not. You, you know, I never know what it means. It's just a working problem. It's a problem that oh. means you're not still. All oh, right. And uh, the thing is, Keith, what Lawrence likes to do is drag jobs out over six months. Yeah. He charges hourly wages. <laughs> so when you, when you get in two hours, this is, this is a, 
giving him a bit of a problem at home with the wife. When he says, oh, it's going to take me a year. She's like, no, 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 no. All the kids, you see. We know what's capable in two hours. Mm. You can have an afternoon and do all kids. Do the family. Mm. Nuns, shopping centres. Yeah, I've done one portrait of my son when he was a baby. Another one of my wife when I first met her. Another one of my other son when he was two. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing these in two hours. And all my life I've said, I can't do it, I haven't got time. And they're going, why are you doing them in two hours up there? Why can't you do them in home in the garage? So I've got myself lumbered now, because it's all on film as well. Bring what were you next time? Enough to it's obviously the Yorkshire air. Makes him work faster. What you, what Tighten on a budget here, Lawrence. <laughs> what ailing have you been getting down here? Anything. John Smith. We had um, Bradfield Brewery. Uh, that's that's Sheffield, was not it? Was it Farmers Blue or something we had last time? Yeah, Sheffield. Mm, Bradfield. That's what we had last time up at the South. That was. Um, how do we describe it? That uh, took a couple of coffees to shake the next morning. <laughs> mm. I don't like that real ale where, it, where it's flat. I like a top on mine. Yeah. Creamy. I don't like real ale because it's usually bottom. flat, isn't it? Bodding, well, Boddington some, is some good. Some of them are. Some of them are. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean. Mm. I don't really like that. I don't like um, dark ales. I, I find. No. Four, I, four sips in, I've got a headache. <laughs> I've got an eye over before I've even mm. done a quarter of a glass. I can't stand uh, what you call it, puppified stuff, lager. Oh, yeah. Too fizzy for me, that. See, I do like lager, but if I go out with my friends, they're really good at drinking lager, whereas I like to maybe have a wine or something like that. But <laughs> I don't like that. When, when you're out with the lads, mm. they're like, what are you having? You're like, same as you. <laughs> like, we're going to get four pints of Carlin. I'm like, yeah, I'll have a Carlin. I sit there thinking, I don't really want to drink this. And we've already had three or four, and I'm like, gassy. Mm. That's why I find it too gassy for me. I do like it, don't get me wrong. A couple of pints, I'll, I'll always have a lager to start. But, um, I like my John Smith. It's like, it's like slim pasta, isn't it? You get full up on it. It's like what? Slim fast, like, like what a, do you mean slim? A milkshake or something. It fills you up. Nah. Have you ever drank a can of slim fast? No. It's really bizarre because you feel you like you've just eaten something, didn't you? You fall. It's really bizarre. Well, that, that's the feeling I get with lager. Fills me up. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Carry on talking, Dan. It's good. No, I'm helping you out. I've seen yeah. it evolve quite quickly. Yeah, it did. Things have happened now. And the old boys kept, you know, kept his face still. That's what I was listening to. He's I not thought. bad for 82, is he? 82, I thought he was 96 by that, you know? No, but in our life. <laughs> That's what we all say. It's amazing, yeah. Bush shelters, air raid shelters. Been in a few of them. When I was up, I went to boarding school near where Near where Lawrence lives, actually. North, uh, in Suffolk? It was north, uh, near Norwich. Mm. Norwich. Yeah, Military family. A play called uh, Wyndham. Mm. And uh, I remember, because I was a boarder, so I used to stay there until we had exit out, which was like about three or four weeks until you, you got released on dailies. And uh, we used to have to go to chapel, and, and it was a new thing that I like, did Sunday school when I was younger with my dad, but never really had to go to chapel. And that was uh, in air raid shelters, old air raid shelters. So he used to go to, to chapel on a Sunday morning, sit in these freezing cold tin huts, effectively. Mm. Oh. Insane. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Where's Liz? Is it, is it Liz? She was here last time, wasn't she? Yeah, she's teaching. Mm. So uh, she's got one of the level two cohorts. So we're getting to that pinch point of the year where... What does she teach? Photography. Oh. So, yeah, we're, we're all photographers. So, 
my I've got my second year students who are just on their break, but they're slightly more independent by the time they go into the second year. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just starting their final major project for the year. So they're currently working through 50 ideas, so the, they've all got three ideas. <laughs> they've had a week to work on 50, and, and they're on about number three. So uh, me being in here saves them slightly. I'm going num bum now, chum. Oh, you're too tough, bad luck. <laughs> no sympathy at all, is he? No. It's just getting good. You'll have to suffer. You wrote down a boom of mine, for God's sake. What are you talking about? You won't sat down there, were you? No. I was, some of the time, when I was driving diesels, locomotive. Part of me. Career, if you can call it that. How long were you in the mines for? 30 years. 59, 62, 90 when they closed it down. I'd have still been there if they had to close it. Was it Brodsworth that they closed yeah. in Yeah. That's crazy. So I used to remember we, when we were younger, we used to uh, <laughs> go into the quarries over the back, you know, the church, the Adwick Church. Mm, there used to be a choir boy there. Back, back since the quarries, we used to... Defend. Adwick Church? Yeah, do you know the massive spire? No, that was Woodlands. Woodlands Church. Woodlands Church. Woodlands Church, yeah. I do at least it was a yeah, little yeah. old one. Woodlands further down. Church, yeah. Yeah. All Saints, they call it. That's how it's called. Mm. Yeah, we used to. Uh, I was there uh, a while back, somebody's funeral. I think it was wife's cousin, he died. And all the mining community come yeah. because he were a. He were a of a man, down pit, right. well liked. Come on, Lawrence, hurry up. I'm a bit panicky now. Smoothing it now, so he's taking, every, every time he smooths it down with some four years ago off, so let him keep smoothing. The longer the best for you. The more sore your bum, the younger you're gonna look, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I could do with some of that. <laughs> We're down to the 84 now. All oh, right. <laughs> Quite a while to go then. Yeah. It's like a, what do you call them, a cage? A lift going down. Yeah, cage. Into the dark. You said you went down Capstick, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That's great. You said it were a long way down. Well, well, well. No, it wasn't. We used to go nine, 1,900 foot and then 2,500 foot. What? Mm. 2,000? Yeah. 2,500, Thorncliffe Sea. Two and a half kilometres. Foot, sorry, not metres. Foot. What's that in? It's just over a mile. 1,760 is a mile. I go down a ladder and I, <laughs> I go down stairs, I think. I'm uh, far. You I went caving with my dad. Uh, he's a mountaineer, uh, an outdoor pursuit instructor. We used to go caving with him. I'd never I, do that. One of the things I didn't want to know is how far underneath we were, because as soon as that got in your head... Yeah, you were that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, my missus, we went to in catacombs at, at yeah. to Rome, yeah. and she got to entrance, gone down this little alleyway like that, and, and she was scared to that. She, she didn't want... She claustrophobic. And, yeah. and she was saying at pyramid, pyramids at Egypt, she won't go in. So you say you wouldn't go caving, but you're happy to spend your time down a mine? Yeah, but it's not this, you're not in enclosed spaces all the time. You don't go down little holes. You know, I wouldn't be scared of doing that, but it's not something, having done mining, that I'd like to do. I've done all that. I'm not sure I signed up to it, because <laughs> I liked it. I think, I think I'm more, more volunteered into it, yeah, by proxy. Me and one of my mates, uh, Oaksy, we used to, uh, we went with my dad once. And we went in this cave. And I think I told you this, didn't I, Lawrence, where we got to this one bit, and my, my dad's ex forcer so he's really, really good at spinning yarn. And we got, got through this one bit of this cave, and, and my dad's there, and he's like chest deep in this water. And he's going, look, you need to get on this slope on the side. Don't come down here, because it's open. And like, I know some of the caves, like Gaping Gill, and you've got the plug and things like this, which have got big sub, sub holes in them and, and all sorts. So it's like, it's, it's a 
open crack underneath here, so just hold on tight, up at that side, don't come into this because you could go straight through it. I was like, right, so we were babbering ourselves anyway. Shimmy along this side, and my dad like tends to slip and just knocks my foot, so I slide straight down this, absolutely terrified, into this puddle of water that's like that deep. My dad's like basically laid down in this puddle, arching his back, pretending he's stood up. I let out a massive scream, everyone laughs. Just like, yeah, cheers. Thanks. Thanks for that one. He used to be great. You're talking about the cage. Can you imagine going down the cage on a, on a Monday morning after everybody's been on ale all weekend? It's like you can feel, football, isn't it? Yeah. feel <laughs> because everybody were, were pressed like that up against each other. So every release of air, you could feel it coming up. <laughs> yeah, Sunday League football, there was always that one guy that was confident on the toilet, and he'd always beat the lads into changing rooms, go in the toilet, and he'd come out smiling. Yeah. It'd take about 30 seconds until the room were full of your block. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I used to be mates with a bloke called George Clarkson, the big lad he was. And I wasn't that big then. He used to make mince me to me. But every time we got on the cage, I used to get the back of him, get over his neck like that, and he, he was useless. He couldn't do anything. He, he was scared stiff of this, this cage. But, so he say, Marshall, when I get over here, I'll kill you. How big was the cage? Or did they vary? Uh, was it a generic size? Sometimes, say, look, looking at them uh, things up there, them yellow things, yeah. about as wide as that. What, three yellow? Three decks? yellow, yeah, and, and up to the door, maybe. Two decks, that's my phone, ain't it? She's right. telling, Jump probably. Right you, yes, please. And, uh, but then they were in a bigger one, which were double as wide as that, and, and uh, two decks. Don't move around too much to get top off. I can't see. No, our phone's on in class. <laughs> one missed call, one lock. It's giving me the Wi Fi, isn't it? Yeah. Are you alright, Leonard? Uh, Lawrence? It's good, it's good, it's good, as long as you're. Looking down is good, I can get the top of your head. Get me glasses, will you, please? Yeah. They're in the same pocket. Yeah. Sandra Mo, thank you. Now this is gonna be interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Oh Christ, there you go. Who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. I don't use this very often, me. I say these are for emergency. So I just have a wander down? I bet she's in lay-by. Yes, please. So I'll, I'll give her a call first, shall I? Option, Sandra's mobile, call, yes. <laughs> now then, are you, are you outside? Uh, no, I'm going to be another 10 minutes or so. Oh. Are you alright? Okay. Alright, as long as I'm not going to give me a ticket. Are you in lay by? Yeah. I think Daniel's. Please. Daniel. Please. Daniel's going to come down to you. Oh, alright. How will I know it? You'll he'll, know. He'll make himself known. <laughs> okay. See ya. Alright. <laughs> alright. White, white Nissan Note. Yeah. What's any uh, any numbers? Uh, you can only do one there. Finishes in CLU. Well, that's fine. Okay. Oh, coming off. Keep on locked. Right. Let's go for it. Last push. Oof. You want to stand up a minute? Yeah, that'd be great. That's it, you stay stand up. Good. Good. 
I've got some air as well. I'm trying. Your head shape's quite interesting. I've got a photograph of that. I could touch interesting it. in what way? Because it's half bald and half hair. So I think I'm just, I was giving you a little dome, but you look like William Shakespeare. <laughs> so now, I've given you all the same texture, which helps a lot. Mm -hmm. You want me to? It's good, it's good. Thank you. It's good. Don't give it a little eye. Sometimes we do eyes, sometimes we don't. Should I be charging you for this photo?
looks like you've got a big piece of chewing gum stuck in. <laughs> Sandra, Sandra Lawrence. Hello. Hello. Do you want to see? I always thought you were going to have a head covered. You're open. This is all you'll have to sit down and stroll up your hand for cover you. Honestly. It stands like that, so you'll be constantly looking up. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm glad you think so. I've called him in for extra time, I'm afraid. He's been talking too much and he's got a very oh, does, does. bloody annoying happy face, which I don't like. She wouldn't say that. No, he's not like her at all. He's enjoyed talking about mining, would you oh, believe? Oh, he loves it. Yeah, would you yeah, believe that? It. Yeah. I don't think he's spoken about it before. He you didn't want it ever to be forgotten, actually. That's you, his feeling. You're on your to show now, Sandra. No, sir. He's signed the official secrets out. I'll kill him, I'll have a ball tonight. So if you've got a little bit of time, I might get that twinkle in the eye you fell in love with all those years ago. Yeah, but you can go now if you want, and forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how you know, desperate you are to get home. He was very worried about his ball patch, but I've covered that up. I won't worry at all. You can't do anything about it, Lawrence. It's all on telly, don't worry, you'll see. The crisis, the makeup department couldn't handle it. <laughs> she said she were in a lecture from one while three. Yeah. I'm gonna text her, you say. Can't hear you. I said stop talking so I can get on. Well, well I keep telling me to talk. From the start, <laughs> no. Should have been done hours ago. No. <laughs> Should have been useful, actually. Don't Stop me. smiling! What? <laughs> that damn mouth. You're hungry. making me laugh. I'm not. You said you wanted a woman, you, didn't you? you? You like to see a man in crisis, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> My reputation's at stake. We got it now. Yeah. Danny's the one that lets me know whether it's happening. And he starts taking photographs, so now I'm getting close. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't come on with the camera, I'm buggered. <laughs> You're making me smile again. You'll be complaining to me. Is that my nose rubbed off? <laughs> Yesterday they wanted them. Um, they said, Could you put a hook in your nose so I can hang my keys off it? <laughs> He's going to get it. Crack 
crack the link anyway. San Sandra wants me to add her on Facebook. <laughs> there you go, Keith. Mm. He's not on Facebook. You wouldn't know what to do, Keith, would you? I don't want anything to do with it. It's quite interesting. A lot of them. Um, oh, I think it's handy. A lot of miners are. Yeah, a lot of miners are on there. Yeah, we get a lot of pictures from our uh, Woodlands and Adwick site. Yeah. There's a lot of miners' pictures going on. Are you missing out there, yeah, Keith? I'm not, because she's do it all. If, she, if there's anything on what interests me, she showed me. And you are one of them, really, just by proxy. Well, I wouldn't know how to get into it. Oops. How did you miss that? I was just worried about stabbing my eye out. Are you doing loads and loads of this? Yeah, there's four in there. It's like the guillotine's been in. He's going to do a cast of me and send it to me. You're going to get a plaster one? Plaster oh, no, one, yeah. I've got to have it staring at us now while we're watching telly. <laughs> He's on telly. Whilst Which you're watching him on telly. Because I'm sure he'll be on it every night. We're going to the Cavern Club. Cavern Club? New Orleans, is it? No. no Liverpool. Do you mean the photograph? Yeah. No, it's me and Keith outside the um, trams in New Orleans. Stood outside the cool. tram. No, you haven't put the book there, Sandra. No, I haven't. That's not me. <laughs> oh, Cavern Club, I am. Sorry, Liverpool. <laughs> oh, you said Liverpool. Sorry, sorry. I have. I did it not long ago, yeah. Sorry, that's all, yeah. Right, we've had a gym. Oh, cheers. So I've just got to accept you, have Well, most people do, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. I could have thought. And then what we'll do is we'll drop the link onto your Facebook page so you can just click it and it'll bring you straight yeah. towards. Oh, shit. There's a load of other films on here as well, about all of our previous. Yeah. Whew. Very exhausting. So you still don't know what you're going to do with them yet, then? I think I'm going to use his heads in the final. In Doncaster, I mean. Yeah, I think oh. I'm going to use his heads in the final and. Don't distract him, Sandra. Oh. He's, he's under pressure. Yeah, that's good for the side, isn't it? His nose is a bit pointed, though. Is it as bad as that? Is it as pointed? No, you're right. You never noticed it. No, you're right. That's what I need. Good criticism. <laughs> you were telling us to bog off in a minute. Well, it's not far out. A wide nose. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely in from that side, yeah. She'll yeah. be telling you what to do yeah. in a minute, Lauren. Definitely. Oh, I need it. You know, she knows best. She has to look at you. She's she always has done for the last 50 years. I've had it for two years, two hours and I've had enough. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody shop. 50 years married. I need a medal as big as a dustbin lid. Yeah. I know why he's got a wall spot now. Yeah. Comments like that, the thing's been thrown. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a scar from Cullenburg. It's obviously a happy marriage. Well, it had to be. She told 50 me, years. He told me how happy you are with him. Sometimes. You're the cat that got the cream, he said. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> you are a liar. <laughs> it's all on telly. It's all on telly. Yeah. Do they have tickets out there then for the little film men with the yellow lines? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, right? the biggest conversation in these films is about the car park. Car parking. Yeah, the history of mining in uh, Doncaster has got nothing on the uh, history of car parking. <laughs> it's just that they've made, they've made it all so hard to park with the cars and stuff. You can't put cash in anymore. I just think it's stupid. Well, we've had, since I've been here, and I've only been here a few times, there's three pay and display machines that have been ripped up by high apps. So yeah. a guy comes with a crane on the back of the lorry oh, and just takes the parking oh, meter. Oh, right, Incredible. Yeah. He's got other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> You've got 
What I do at night in a hotel is I go and submerge myself under boiling water. Hang on, what are you doing? I'm swallowing me around! <laughs> it all melts off. I think if a thousand years of evolution and the sculptor class will have three arms and the males will be saved. Because I've broken the deadline, I could go on now. I've got to stop, haven't I? You've got six more minutes and then I am putting stops in. Okay, six more minutes. test is when he leaves I leave it in the bath for a half an hour and I'll have a look at it again if it reminds me of him I'm yeah <laughs> oh, damn it <laughs> going for the rest of my life Turned a bit bloody funny. <laughs> oh, I swore. I've just sat on YouTube now. We're going to get prosecuted. <laughs> Nearly there. You look about 72 now. <laughs> How old were you? You're making me younger now. Keep going. Oh God, I'll carry another five minutes and there'll be a baby in my hands. <laughs> Wait till you get the white spirit out and start smoothing you up. Mm. Give up. That was scary bloke, isn't it? Come on, my mind will fax you. Hmm. Don't mention her. 
Can't avoid it around here, I'm afraid. What are you whispering about? Thatcher. 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 Okay, are we there? Got one minute. <coughs> oh. He still looks like an actor. I always said when he did his photo. Like he looks like a Shakespearean actor. We are full. What did we say you used to look like when you were younger? Gradually, he's moved on. He's too young. Judy Dench? No. Well, they call him the mustache. Mustache? Tom Selleck or something. Tom Selleck. Sure. And what used to be a Magnum? Yeah, what they call him. Mag? Tom Selleck, yeah. Yeah, Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, yeah. Do you know him now? Do you know him? Would I know him? Yeah, big oh, moustache. Yeah. And I used to have a big moustache. Magnum. Magnum. I used yeah. to have a big moustache. Yeah. When were you younger? That would have been fun. I'd have got an easy likeness then. I'd have got an easy likeness then. Okay. Done? Yeah. There you are. You've got that angle. Oh, that's yeah. definitely him. Isn't it? Isn't it you keep that? You can see better than me. Oh, it's definitely, yeah. Ready? I've got the angle? Yeah. <laughs> Please? Yeah. Happy. All right. All right. Benevolent face, smiling. When I tell him he's nice, he tells me I'm... Full of shit. Full of shit. When I'm... When I'm tell him... When I try and... Do you mind as a young girl here? Dent his yeah. ego. Very worse. She's even worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, well done. You've been very, very good. So, you've been entertaining two hours on the films. I'm looking at you I'll a bit. I'll never forget you. <laughs> He's cribbing some time here, Daniel. Yep. There you go. Don't know. Let's get approval. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's the angle when he looks up like that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely caught him there. Mmm. Very good. Looks happy, isn't it? Yeah. It's nearly as hard work as coal mining. Oh, the back's gone. <laughs> Very good. It's the psychological pressure. Mm. So, I'll get the coat now, eh? I'll get it out. Have you got somebody else coming in? Yeah.